Hello, ladies. I am so excited to chat with you guys today about how you can start building your team. I, before we start building, going into the team building phase, I do have to say, I'm like so pumped about the direction our team is going. This month, we've gotten a lot of new, highly qualified women on the team who are honestly blowing me away with their professionalism, their hard work, and their goals. I've loved hearing emails from some of you ladies about how you're asking me, is it realistic to hit Emerald in my first month or week? Or, um, you know, I really want to be a diamond coach by the end of the year. If you think I can do that, I love that you're chasing big goals and you're not just sitting back and waiting. Um, had an awesome call. I have to give Brittany a shout out. She is going through all the new trainings like a boss and, um, you know, I'm just so impressed with you guys, how good you're starting off. You're not afraid of, um, you're, you're just not afraid of the walls and maybe the fears that might come with doing something for the first time. You're all about just making it happen. So great job. Please know that I'm here for you. A, on this call, if you have questions, type them in. I'm going to answer them for you. This is for you. And then B, anytime that you're looking through the back office or you're about to add a coach and you're like, what do I do? Feel free to message me or post on our team page. We're here to support you. I know that each of you, all of you, can be diamonds by the end of this year. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about one of the biggest mistakes I made <laughs> um, and how I know it should not take you 18 months to become a Beachbody Diamond Coach. Um, so I'm going to dive into that a little bit because, like I said, as you might have saw, I just hit diamond this week, but it took me too long. And the main reason it took me that long it was all my fault. I was afraid to build a team. I remember starting as a coach and for the first six months I said, I'm just going to kind of watch. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to not be a leader is essentially what I said. I was afraid to annoy people or afraid of what people thought of me. And it didn't help. My business stayed stagnant because I chose to do that. And one day, I think it was pretty soon after Ellie was born, I said, you know what? I don't, I'm going to stop caring so much what people think because I know deep down my heart is to share value with people. I'm not in this to make money. I'm honestly in this just to help people and to change people's lives. And I know that you all have that same attitude. So don't let those fears of thinking what people think or anything like that hold you back from making a change in people's lives. Um, Brittany, I'm going to share your comment if you don't mind. I didn't know if the military thing changed anything for me, but what is the, okay, I'll come to that at the end. That's a good question about reoccurring monthly costs, but yeah, that's a really good question that you should all be talking about. So thank you for that. Um, but yes, ladies, when you're getting started, don't make the mistake I made and start your business feeling fearful and afraid people. I've probably only had a handful of people who have ever said, who have ever kind of given me backlash, but I've had hundreds of people thank me. Like, thank you for sending me that email that, that made such a difference. Or I'm so glad you hopped on live video to share about compression socks or about anemia or, or about this awesome recipe. People genuinely want to hear insights from you. I, this is one of my favorite quotes. People are surrounded by knowledge, but starve for insight. They can go and look up pretty much anything they could possibly need on Google, but when they have someone like you to get direct insights from how you're doing with your workouts, even your struggles, some of your favorite recipes, when people get to see an insight to your daily life and you just own that, people are naturally drawn to you. So I'm going to kind of share two really big strategies that are going to help you as you're starting to build your team. Um, the main one that we're going to talk about is marketing strategy that's working right now in the marketplace. I do. And when I say marketplace, I'm meaning the online space, Facebook, Instagram, things like that. Um, the market is always changing. So I'm always doing my best to be investing in courses and learning for you guys and knowing exactly what you need to do to, um, to build your team and to be successful in this partnership. So two main things that everything's going to be under the, the two main ways for you to recruit strong, and to um, build your team is to, to focus on relationship building and visibility. So I'm going to go through the main way, and this is the most important way definitely, is the relationship building piece. And then the thing right now in the market that's working for most visibility. So the first most effective way to build relationships um, is simple as that, building relationships. Knowing that you genuinely just want to get out there, get to know people, and build your network. Um, most of the people on our team at this point are people I didn't know 
from school or anything like that. They're people that just over time on Instagram, on Facebook, we started commenting back and forth. We became friends. And then eventually one of the, either they reached out to me or I reached out to them about the partnership. So, um, the question is, how do we do this without being gross? Like you've gotten those messages in your message box before, like, Oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure that person just sent that message to 500 other people, you know? Um, and first off, I never, ever want you to send a candid message because it's not genuine at all. Um, so how do we, how do we maybe talk to people and build that relationship without them thinking we're spammy or, um, gross or anything like that? The one thing that's working really well in the market right now is building relationships through private Facebook groups. So I'm sure some of you are part of them right now. Maybe you have a local mom's group or you have a local online running community. I'm a part of tons of business um, groups, the screw the nine to five community, um, the rising tide society. Um, look for groups where people who you know you would want to be on your team are at. Um, really there's hundreds of thousands of entrepreneur groups that have hundreds of thousands of people in them that is just opening up a whole new network for you. And it's just a way to make friends. This is a strategy that I've been using personally. That's been working really well. It's kind of like a step-by-step -step process and I'll make sure to share this in when I do our replay as well. But what I've been doing and what a lot of entre entrepreneurs are doing that's working right now to build relationships are they're joining these Facebook groups where um, your people are and you get on and introduce yourself. Normally the group rules tell you like absolutely introduce yourself, totally fine. You can do so typically either by a live video or just by posting a picture and saying, hey, my name is Amber. I'm so excited to get to know you guys. Um, you don't even have to say you're a Beachbody coach. Just say like I'm a, I'm a mom who's passionate about health and I'm excited to get to know you. Um, you then, anyone who engaged with that post, so if they comment, if they like it, you add them as a friend. Um, you've already made a connection that's not weird. They're not thinking you're stalking them. They've obviously seen your face already and they're totally fine with um, the ad. I've never had anyone reject an ad that I've done that before. And then you start to do your best to share value with the people. Maybe someone in the group asks a question like, man, you guys have any really easy crock pot recipes? I'm struggling over here. And you comment like, oh my gosh, I've got five here. Like, check them out. Um, or you get on and you just do a post that's um, depending on, you know, this, whatever the group is. If it's a workout mom's focus group, you can say, hey guys, this is a workout that I've been doing for uh, a couple months, it's a mom baby workout. Here's what it is. If, an, if it's an entre entrepreneur group, maybe you say something like, you know, this week I was struggling with X, Y, and Z, and here's how I overcome it. Has have any of you ever struggled with that? You're only trying to share value and getting to know people. Very similar to maybe how you do an Instagram post or a post on your personal Facebook page, with the only intent is to get to know people. Um, every time you go into this, I don't want you in the I want you to avoid thinking in the back of your mind, ooh, maybe they'll be a good coach. I honestly want you to take away all of that and just think, I want to make friends. I want to make friends. I want to share value with people. I want to build my network. Anytime someone engages in that post, meaning they like your post, they comment on your post, add them on Facebook. Again, we're just building our network and we're only getting to know people. After you've started, you know, friending these people on Facebook, conversing with them in these groups a little bit, totally fine to reach out to them on a private message, nothing about Beachbody. You're just trying to be friends. And it, and it doesn't have to be out of the blue. Maybe they commented on your post. Maybe you said something and they commented back and maybe just respond in a private message and say, hey, it was, I so appreciate you sharing that comment. And you just honestly are having a conversation. Um, you're saying, you know, I'm a busy mom too and I am so thankful you shared that recipe or, um, if they're talking about, for me, um, running, I might say like, are you training for a race or, you know, what are you training for? Or what are your running goals right now? Totally just being friends. Um, if at that point they start to ask you like, oh, I noticed in your profile, you're a beach body coach or, oh, um, what do you do? Or like, tell me more about what you do. Absolutely start to share. But honestly, your goal for the first month of knowing them is just to make their, make friends. Um, this is definitely a long-term process and we want to, again, avoid that slimy nastiness. And when you're going in and you're not even saying to the world, you're a beach body coach, you're just going in and making friends and knowing that's your heart over time, people are going to figure it out. Eventually you're going to have a post that you post publicly or you share in a live video saying like, Hey, I'm recruiting for my team. And they're going to come to you and they're going to say, Hey, I didn't even know you were a beach body coach. I appreciate that you didn't fill my inbox with like 
nasty canned messages. Um, so that strategy honestly works so, so well. Um, know it's a long-term strategy. When you're going in the first month, two months, just know all you're doing, trying to do is make friends. That's all you're trying to do. Maybe you're like, well, I, don't, I haven't found a good Facebook group where my people are hanging out or people that I want to work with. Then I think you should start your own Facebook group. I'm actually about to start my own in a couple weeks. Um, and just start making a community of people that you want to hang out with that you can check in on every day and see how they're doing and that you can help enhance their life in some kind of way. Um, another strategy that's been working really well um, this strategy works particularly well when you someone's already asked about the partnership. Uh, maybe you posted something online and they said, oh, I'm interested. And maybe you reached out and said, hey, you know, you can apply here on my website or um, do you want to talk more about it? Do you have questions? And maybe you didn't hear back from them. Maybe they kind of left you hanging. A good second step is to send them an audio message. So let me show you. Um, you can do this on iMessage really easily which most of you have, but you can actually now do it on Facebook Messenger. So if I pull up my Facebook Messenger, it's really, really awesome. Um, but, and let's say I want to message Brittany. I can pull her up here. I can click, there's this little, it's gonna have three dots in it in a box. It's like to the far left. And you're gonna see something that says voice. And I can literally click voice. I can record and just say something like super genuine and kind. Like, hey, Brittany, I saw that you are doing P90X now. That's so awesome. How are you enjoying it? Like, or actually in the case of you've reached out to someone you're following up, you could say, hey, Amber, I was, I'm so excited that you reached out to me about joining my team. I have been seeing you on Facebook and you have just been so inspiring to so many people. Um, if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. You can totally message me here or we can hop on the phone and I would answer any questions you want. Keep it under a minute. But when people hear your voice and you send this special little message, it just feels more genuine. You can't send that same message to 500 other people. So they know it's going directly to them. And typically you're going to get a response of either, yes, I'm interested or no, I'm not. But at least it leaves you not hanging anymore. It's just kind of something different instead of just a message people feel more apt to get back to. So um, definitely give that a try. And people just love, I mean, think of too, I've had people send me audio messages before too. And I just feel special. Like, oh, they made this special message for me. I don't know if you've had those to you or not, but um, consider doing that as a follow-up strategy after someone showed interest or even just to start a conversation with someone if you're comfortable with that. Um, the last most effective strategy that I've been implementing lately that has gotten new recruits on my team is just being genuine and sharing your story. Um, I have been building my email list over the past six months or so, and a couple of times a week, maybe once a week, I have shared about my story as a Beachbody coach. I shared about how... I was pregnant, working full time, and I knew I wanted a way to be home with my daughter. And um, I had prayed a lot about an opportunity and God opened the door for me. And over time, it allowed me to save up and invest money in becoming a run coach, paying for certifications, paying for mentorship. And um, without that, and without the strategies I learned from the team, I would have never been able to do that. And just being genuine and sharing that, um, people resonate with that a lot. It's not like this crazy sales pitch. You're just saying, hey, I, these are my, this is my story. This is some things we are working through as a family. I think I even mentioned, you know, our finances weren't in the best place. Um, it was a little scary to drop an income. But it, I took a leap, and I'm so thankful I did. And here are some of the things I learned um, and, and even then responding back, you know, have you wanted to be home with your kids? Have you wanted an opportunity to jump in the health and fitness business at a low cost? Cause let's be honest, starting a business at $140 is very, very affordable. And when you get all the support from our team trainings, from our Facebook groups, it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so those are probably the top three ways that you can build relationships very, very authentically. And I'll definitely share these notes in our team page so you can refer back to them as well. Um, I do wanna take a quick second to hop over and answer a couple questions, and then I'm gonna go over to the best way for you to be visible right now in the marketplace. Um, so Brittany asked a question about um, the reoccurring monthly cost for someone who signs up to be a coach that isn't a military 
um, plus the portion of the Shaco. Um, so, you know, those of you, if you have people who are in the military or their military spouse or even a veteran, um, they do still sign up with the challenge pack purchase, but their monthly fee is waived. Um, so essentially they sign up as a challenge pack and they get access to everything at 20% off just like we do. They just don't have the monthly website fee. Um, but for uh, those of us who are not military, um, it is $15.95 per month. And then if you do monthly Shakeology, it's $97. So it ends up being, <laughs> horrible math in my head, $112, <laughs> um, which after you start getting Shakeology reoccurring orders, um, you won't notice it. I, I promise you. I don't think from month one, um, as long as you get three Shakeology orders the first month, that's paid. And if they keep going, then it's covered, which is really nice. Um, and then it says, and do we predominantly sell the $140 challenge packs? Great question. I normally do. And the really nice thing right now about the challenge packs is all of the most popular challenge packs are on sale till October. So that's 21 Day Fix, 21 Day Fix Extreme, Pio, Hammer Chisel, 21 Day Hardcore. Um, all are on sale for 140. I think it's a total of 15 challenge packs. So it's like perfect timing. Um, this is like the time of the year that people are really starting to get back engaged because now back to school's over. So moms are starting to feel like they can breathe again and they can actually do some of these challenge groups. So it's, it's perfect timing and I'm so glad that they marked them all down as well. Um, they also marked down the beach body on demand challenge group challenge pack, which means you get access to beach body on demand and Shakeology. Um, so really, I mean, it's, that's a great price for all that you get. Uh, second question, when someone gives us an email address, can we automatically add them to our list or do they actually have to opt in somewhere to receive emails from us? So this is technically what the rules say. The rules say, and I don't know where these rules are exactly written, but um, when someone gives you their email address, you are legally allowed to email them back three times, like on your own. If they do not respond back to you, within those three emails, you are technically not allowed to email them again. Now, the only way that would become an issue is if they decided to sue you. Um, so, <laughs> um, but I've never, I've not had that issue. Technically, if you want to get people on your email list, they technically do have to opt in. Um, the nice thing is, is, you know, you can have, you can make really easy opt-in forms on MailChimp, which is free. Um, I use Active Campaign right now, and it starts at nine dollars a month, which is so cheap. And the nice thing about Active Campaign over Mailchimp is Active Campaign can do um, one-click opt-in, which means as soon as they put their email address in, they're in. Versus Mailchimp is I put my email address in, then they have to confirm their subscription in their inbox. So extra steps, honestly, for some people makes a difference. Um, my opt-ins doubled when I only had one opt-in. So if you're not to that level yet, like don't feel like you have to be there, but for those of you who are list building, um, you technically do have to have them opt in on their own. Um, but feel free if they leave their email um, to privately email them on your list three times and maybe by the third time you ask them to join your sign up form and then they can do it themselves. So that's kind of up to you and how you want to strategize that. Again, I've never had someone sue me if they have an issue, they just unsubscribe and it's like, it's no big deal. So. Um, good questions though. So let me hop over to talking about visibility in the marketplace. Um, as you know, the rules have been changing. Things that worked six months ago are different and whatever's working now is going to change six months from now too. That's the nice thing about Team Inspires. They're always working on cutting edge um, marketing strategies and you know me as your coach. I'm a learning junkie, I'm always going to be investing in programs and learning the best thing for you guys. So know that I'm always in a program learning something. I'm currently learning about Facebook ads. So hopefully next month we can dive and talk about that a little bit, but um, I don't think that's necessary for you guys getting started. Um, right now what's working most in the marketplace is live video. And here's why. For those of you who are familiar with the app Periscope, it came out a year ago. It's a live video broadcasting app. Um, it got really popular really fast and people were pulling away from Facebook. So Facebook went over to Periscope and said, hey, can I buy you for, I don't know, some odd million dollars? And Periscope said, no thanks. So Facebook said, well, I want my people back on Facebook. I'm going to make this thing called live video on our platform. And lo and behold, it brought the traction back to Facebook and Facebook with their algorithm. So they have all these special robots that decide what's going to be on your newsfeed. 
those robots are pushing live video up in your feed. So the priority for Facebook right now is live video. It's just a fact. So for you to optimize getting people to pay attention, because maybe you've noticed like, man, my Instagram likes are getting way less or my Facebook posts are getting way less likes and engagement. It's honestly because people aren't seeing it. It's not because they don't like your content. It's because they're not seeing it. So if you feel like you want to get more engagement and, and get more traction from people, I would suggest getting on live video. Now, I know that might feel like, oh my gosh, that's super scary. I don't want to talk to people and look stupid. When I watch my live videos from a year ago, I'm totally different. I have learned a lot, we'll say. Starting off is scary. It's not super easy, but luckily you can start off super low key casually. If you want to download the Periscope app, you can actually do private broadcasts that only you watch. So you could get on, you could talk about something for five minutes. You could go back and watch yourself. And if you're like, yeah, I got this. Like, I feel good about talking about that. Then maybe hop on your, your um, Facebook like page. Or if you're feeling really brave, you get on your personal page. Um, but know you have areas to practice. There's even a setting on your Facebook live feed where you can only broadcast it to yourself. So you can honestly practice on Facebook. I'm not sure if you can actually then change that exact live video to public. I haven't tried that yet personally. Um, but you can more than, you can practice. And then if you think, well, that went horrible, you can practice again. I tell you, practice is just going to make you better and better over time. Um, and that's what's going to help you to start really seeing that traction. So have, I know I saw Brittany hop on live video. How do you guys feel about live? Are you like, I would totally hop on and talk. Are you like, mm, probably not. Are you like, heck no, I never, ever want to do that. Like, how are you guys feeling about live video? Okay. I like um, I feel okay with it. Um, I feel okay with it because um, I do think it reaches more engagement when um, previously when I was working at cor in corporate America, I mean, I worked in a media news industry. And so that was our strategy because we knew that like live video, um, even though we were a newspaper company, like newspaper was only like how we distributed news. It wasn't like who we were. So like any medium that we could distribute news over, like we started going that direction. And um, part of our audience development team that I actually chaired was live video. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't done it until now because like, I mean, it'd be like me and my dog cooking in the kitchen, right? <laughs> so I didn't really feel like I had um, any strategy for posting. So for me, I enjoy it more because you can say a lot that you can't type. Exactly. Exactly. And I know for me, I'm much better at talking than typing. So like utilize your strength as well if it's working for you. And even, I love that you said the dog in your cooking. I do videos where I'm just like, Hey, I'm cooking in the kitchen. Here's my dinner. Yeah. People, they like love it so much because people don't know what to cook. You might think like, doesn't everyone eat healthy? Like I see people on Amber's page all the time are like always sending her recipes because they're like, Oh my gosh, Amber, I know that you eat this like super healthy food. I bet you'd love this. Or anytime she posts something healthy, people are obsessed with it. So if you know that people like it, don't feel like it has to be this super planned, like outline thing. Just literally be casual and be like, hey guys, I'm cooking in the kitchen. This is what's on our plate tonight. And maybe share some rationale behind why you're having this. Like maybe you had a super hard workout, so I got to refuel with carbs and protein, share a little bit of value. And then if you feel comfortable sharing about your next boot camp, I'm like, I can't wait to share this recipe with my boot campers that starts in October. Like you can throw that stuff in there and just be casual and people love it. I mean, even yesterday and like know that the fear factor like is it happens like yesterday, even yesterday I was hopping on doing a live video about, um, um, about compression socks. And I was like, man, I feel like I've been doing all these, I've been talking about products too much lately. Are people going to be tired of it? That is the most engaged live video I've had in a while because people just want to know your feedback. Like do compression socks work? What benefit do they serve? Do you like the legend brand compression socks? Just being genuine and, and getting on and sharing value. People love it. They engage, they like it. It's popping up in the newsfeed more and they're able to see more. And when I see people in person, one of the first things they say to me is, Hey, I love the last live video you did or, Hey, I've been loving your live videos. That one you did on cooking was awesome. No one's ever been like, Jasmine, your live videos are so dumb. Like it's just all in my head. You know what I mean? And if they think it's dumb, like they just have to keep scrolling, but they don't have to watch, you know? So know that right now, 
Facebook is working in your favor to get people on live and utilize it. Um, same thing with Instagram stories and Snapchat. People just, at the end of the day, to build your team, to get people in your boot camp, the no like, trust ha factor has to be high. They have to know who you are, they have to like you, and they have to trust you. And that can be hard to be built with a picture and words. It's very easy to be for people to decide if they like you or if they don't like you. Um, when they see you talking, when they see you on Instagram stories, when they see you on live video, they're going to decide real quick. And honestly, I'd rather have people like love or hate me than like not quite sure about what they want to do with me because then they're never going to commit to anything. You know what I mean? Um, so utilize the live video. If you feel weird about it first, hop on Periscope, do a private broadcast a couple times, do it on your like page because it's not going to get as much, um, People aren't going to see it as much. And then if it goes really well, share it to your personal page. Get comfortable. I promise you, if you commit to doing it three to five times a week in a month, you'll be amazed at how much better you are. And you'll go back and watch your old ones. You'll be like, wow, I've come so far. And people will love it. I promise you. So um, those are my tips for the building your team in a genuine, authentic way. Ultimate, what it comes down to is you're sharing value. You are not leading with like, Hi, my name is Brittany and I'm in this to make money and build my team. You're, you know, and I don't, obviously Brittany doesn't have that attitude, but you're just getting on. You're saying, Hey, I want to help you be a healthier person. I want to help you to be home with your kids. Here's some tips on how you can do it. Here's my story. Here's a really authentic conversation. I'm going to share an audio message with you because I love you and I genuinely care about you. And it's all about just being genuine and allowing people either A, to come to you about the opportunity, or if the conversation starts coming and you're like, wow, they just need this, then I share it with them. You know, it's never this like copy automated post that is gross. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Do you have any last minute questions? Do you feel good about the strategies that we chatted about? Um, do we know for sure what day our training starts like our actual training I guess with maybe I guess it's Amanda is probably doing it right. or um, right. what day I saw I keep seeing dates thrown around but I've seen the 15th which I actually think is a Wednesday um so I think it officially starts on the 15th of September which would be just under a week from now yeah so 15th of Thursday so yeah oh, it's it's a Thursday yeah. so we got a um, week. so um so I have a couple of people I talked to you about maybe was yesterday or the day before that I've, I've talked to you about the opportunity to become um, a coach. Um, do you ever use a strategy basically saying like, Hey, you've got three more days to sign up because we're starting our fall training. Um, like, do you ever use like a hard sell like that to like kind of push somebody over the edge or. I, per and it's obviously it's, it's very, dependent on how you as a person, just from a practicality point and their benefit, I normally end anyone who would apply, like no one else could officially apply, I think after the 31st. Um, because then for me, I'm able to get on interviews, I'm able to kind of finish up with those people, and then the, it, if they can officially decide then by the 15th. Um, I share that it's for their benefit um, and that just for my for my team's sake too, so they can be onboarding everyone at the same time, um, that it just makes sense. I do try to be very genuine. I don't want to be like, I'm just not naturally a like person. Um, but I think that like, it's true that the scarcity factor pushes people over that. Like, it's just a fact. Um, but I try to do it in a very genuine way, a, because for my team's sake and B for their own sake, because they need to, it, if they come September 30th, they've missed out. You know what I mean? Truly. So does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So any other questions? Perfect. Well, I'm going to hit stop.